the guy who shot Malcolm and Marie is one of the cinematographers on Before You Too. Um, amazing, they do such incredible work. They do such incredible work. Euphoria is mind blowing. <laughs> Euphoria is mind blowing. <laughs> because who makes this right in the spot of what I've set it to? So in movies, when you're inside a house, yeah. and there's these lights doing this, and we all think the cops are outside. Yeah. This, light, this light is outside the window. Yeah. I like love stories that don't necessarily end or happen in I think that's, that's less realistic. Um, so I'm, I'm usually more attracted to love stories that have unhappy endings. Um, into a shadow side and there's a light that's falling off from that side. Now, the direction of the camera and the direction of the light is just here and the camera shooting here too. It, you'd, you'd think to yourself that yeah, that's what you want, right? You want to be able to see the person. But it's not cinematic. When you so often, if there's a there's a big window here, I want to film you. I'll put the camera here and shoot light coming from there, as opposed to putting the camera here and light is hitting your face from the same direction. It flattens it. It's not as pretty. It's not. It's not cinematic. So contrast is, like I said, is determined by those other things and it's there's something called contrast ratios which is essentially the difference between the lightest part of your image to the darkest part of the image and that can vary based on how much full light you put in when we spoke about full light mm -hmm. that is influenced by how much full light you put in or how much full light you remove. And the more full light you bring in, the less contrast there's going to be because you added another light here to bring up this side of my face. My key light, that's the light that's predominantly lighting my face. If, if I don't want as much contrast as there is currently, because there's there's obviously less light on this side of my mm -hmm. face than this side, right? If I want more light this side, there's different things I can do. I can either put a light that isn't as strong, mm -hmm. or I can bring in a putty board. Everyone knows what a putty yes. board is. So we, we don't use silver. I mean, we do use silver. We try and avoid silver. But often it's too harsh and unrealistic. Um, I like using soft gold on brown and black skin tones because I like warm, beautiful black faces. There's silver, there's gold, and there's white. I use white too. It's softer, it's more subtle, and it fills in just enough for you to be able to see. The audience is right there too doing this. I'm here on a tripod, that's the distance between the audience and the character. I could be here still on a tripod, but it feels like a tool has been used. So what you constantly try and do in film and in cinema is to is to um, make this unreal world that we've created feel real, right? That's how we end up engaging, that's how we end up feeling. Because it gets to a point where we can't tell if it's real or not. Hence we cry in films. Hence you hate the villain because of what they did. We know they're not real. <laughs> this is not real, but you hate them because of how well that story has been told, or how well that character has performed. 
um, going to be like that. Documentaries are often smaller budgets, less crew. Think quick because it isn't always planned. So it's, there's no like shot list. I mean, you can have a shot list, but your shot list is going to be like, um, at some point I need to make sure I get a wide of this scene. It's never as specific as in a narrative film. I once had with Caravello and she was saying, um, Sometimes we deprive ourselves, we deprive ourselves as storytellers because we are thinking of either protecting the integrity or being sensible towards a certain subject and we're limiting ourselves to explore much more details, you know. And I think one of the shows I did was like, the story is not really about the initiation. And I, I, maybe I'm thinking like Trevor, the, the, the director of Inova, that yo, it's controversy. So people are going to, you know, when, when they're going to talk about it. Maybe it's wrong, maybe it's right, I don't know. But I think um, the more we tell stories that we, we, we are... We are afraid, we are uncomfortable. That, that's when we tap into people's end. So, but I think with, with, with Ingmar, yeah. with Ingmar, um, I think uh, I've had stories from where I come from. I've had stories. Some stories, it's stories that we can never talk about. I don't know if it's a true reflection of what happens there or not. I really don't know. However, I think one thing that made me applaud the, the, the movie was the bravery. But like, I am thinking, because it's told by a white man, that's where my problem is. But when I heard that the story was inspired from a book, uh, a, a man who's not a man, I think, a man who's not a man, eh? And I, I, I did a background check on, on the author there and how they twisted the story into a film. I somehow agree with what you were saying that it, he, he was not sensitive enough to can select some of the images in there. Especially if you're dealing and sensitive, especially with, if you're dealing with stories that are based on lived experiences. Mm -hmm. You're a white man, you're telling a story about Cosa men that went to initiation. You haven't been there. So what's your point of reference? You did Baleo, it deals with female initiation. Mm -hmm. You did research, mm -hmm. you know, and you, we're not just talking about research that you did over, mm -hmm. it's been years mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. trying, and, but the story is really not about initiation mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm for women, mm. you know, it's about identity and other things. So I think this is where the conversation, yes, let's tell these stories that are controversial mm. and that will get people talking, but reference, let us not just do it for the clouds. It's Schindler's List, when you watch the film, what's happening there is very important in the film. So this is a frame, but that's the frame within this frame. This is the frame, this is the frame within that frame. It's a thing to think about and use as often as you can in cinematography. Because it's interesting, right? Um, some of my photography, that's a frame within a frame. Camera movement. And composition. Composition and camera movement. I mean, composition specifically, influenced by lenses. Wide angle lenses, long angle lenses, all of it influences composition. Because composition is where you put your character in the frame. Or what's the most interesting part of that frame? Focus, too, contributes to where your eye looks in a frame, because I could be filmed, I could have the camera here, 
I could have her out of focus and have you in focus. Mm -hmm. Even though she's closer, because she's out of focus, your eye is going to be naturally drawn to what is in focus mm -hmm. in the frame. Mm -hmm. And that's based on depth of field, what, what we saw earlier, yeah. <coughs> and composition. I've composed both of you in that same frame, but you are in focus, so the eye will naturally be drawn to what is sharp in the image. Yeah. In fact, in this shot specifically, in this film, I think they are out of focus. Mm -hmm. That is in focus in the film. Mm -hmm. So your eye goes there because it's sharp, even though we can clearly see there's people in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to stop for today.